Hey, welcome back to Web Squadron. In one of our website pages, we've got an image of me with my arm swinging out in front of a red circle. And as I go up and down with a scrolling effect, I rotate. That's just a scrolling effect. But people have been asking, how did you get that photograph of you with the background cut out and the red circle? And you got it yourself to fit so perfectly within that circle there. You see the curve there. I'm gonna show you how to do that right now. So the tool we used is Canva. Canva is free, okay? There is a premium version, but you can do what I'm gonna show you in the free version, or you can use other tools as well. I've got an image here of a lady swinging her hair as she's listening to music. This is from one of the photos, you know, whole range of stuff you can get with Canva. And what I've done is click the photo, go to edit image, and then I've done background remover. Now, when you do background remover, it cuts away the background and I'm left with the person. But the problem is we got this very flat, um, like dissection of her legs going on there and I want to stick it into a circle. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go over here and I'm first thing I'm going to do is drag in a circle, okay? And I'm going to make the circle be roughly about that big. In fact, I'm going to change the color of that circle because I don't like it too much and make it a little bit brighter. Yeah, there you go. That's all right. What I'm then going to do is go over to Canva again and I'm going to type frame. And that's when you now get the frame um, elements. And these are stuff that when you put an image in, it will fill the image. So let's take that as well. So we've got it and I'm gonna position it to be at the top of the circle. And I'm now gonna do that. And don't know if you could have seen, don't know if you saw that, but there were some pink lines appeared. They appear and they disappear. That's telling me now that that is perfectly the same size as the circle behind. I'm gonna move these just out of the way for a moment because I don't need them to fully overlap. I'm gonna take this person now OK, and because they're already a transparent background, I'm actually going to drop them onto the circle. So let me do it like this. Move that circle over there and I'm going to drop this person onto the circle like that. Pretty simple. Yay. Actually, I'm going to undo that. I need to make a copy before I do that. So I'm just going to make a copy of that person and I'm now going to put the copy onto the circle. If I now do crop, OK, and I pick her up or increase her size, not pick her up. Can you see there is a, a, a faded outline there cutting over her hair? That means that this part of her hair is outside the circle, the frame, whereas this part is inside. And if I now do that, her face will be outside. Look, watch what happens when I do done. The face has disappeared. Let's go back to crop. I want her face to be inside, but I don't mind if her hair is kind of sticking out. I don't mind that, okay? So I'm gonna go for something like that. And then I hit return. Now what I get is I've got her, but I've now got a missing part of her hair. But the key thing is the bottom of her body there near her waist. It's now within a circle. If I now pick this up and I move this circle to be in the middle of the screen, and I now pick her up and move her to be basically uh, there, she is now perfectly within that yellowish circle. Perfectly within it, and the curve follows the body. I hope you're following this so far. It's really simple and easy but her hair is missing. So what I'm gonna do is go over to this copy of her, bring it to the front, and I'm then, oops, sorry. Well, sorry, here's the other thing. When you drag, it instantly will start to stick it back in the circle. So rather than doing that, put your finger on shift and then just position it like this. So basically what you wanna do is you just wanna move it ever so slowly so you're now over the image. Now at the moment, this she's not the right size, so I'm just gonna increase the size now until I get the perfect sizing. Yeah, there you go, that does it. So now I've got her perfectly on. Here's the really cool thing now. She is now, let me just shrink myself down even a little bit more, just so you can see what I am doing. But I'll do that, there we go, let me just move myself out. By overlapping it onto it, we now get her hair back and it's in line with the image below. But now we've got her waist and her legs sticking out again and over here. But don't forget, because this is another image on top, I hit crop and now I can do this. I can basically just cut away what I don't wanna show. So I'm just gonna do all of this, just that. So what I'm in effect doing is the second image, I'm taking away the body, the legs, the arms, everything. When I hit return now, look, let me just show you. That is what is left. Let me undo that. So what I now have is like a perfectly transparent image with the hair coming out of the circle. Here's a really clever bit again. 
I'm just going to resize this and I'm going to resize this to be about, uh, I'm going to go for a 600 by 600 pixel. So I'm going to copy and resize. So Canva will now resize this to be a full square. Of course, the image is now cropped as well or shrunken. I will then do control or command A to highlight everything. I will then right click and group. And then what I'm going to do is I'm now just going to increase the size to be about uh, something like that. There, I'm OK now. I'm now going to save this and I'm going to call it lady or girl or whatever you want to call it. OK, I'm then going to download it as a transparent background. This is important. You don't have to do transparent background. If this is going to sit on a um, a white section with a white background, you know, color, transparent or not transparent, white background, you don't need to make it transparent. But I would say make it transparent because you could now have her swinging and she might be overlapping two sections. It's a nice little neat feature. So we're going to download that. So I'm on a page and I've got two sections. One is gray and one is a darker gray. In the bottom one, uh, in this boxed width section. Of course, you could do it in two columns. You know, you could put those images wherever you want, but I've just got one column, boxed width 600. I'm going to drop into here the image. Of course, I'm just dropping it in as I want. You probably would have had a WebP format or done something like that, you know, with your sizing and everything like that. So what we now have is the image. In fact, I'm just going to go to this section and I'm going to add like tons of ridiculous padding just to make it massive at the bottom, okay? 1,000, like that. I think I did 10,000 then. No, I did, there you go, right? So now we have the image. You can clearly see the overlap going on there. Now, of course, you're gonna say the hair doesn't look very clear. That's just how it was in the photo, okay? I'm just showing you an effect. You'll probably have something clearer. We're then gonna click on the image, go to advanced, go to uh, motion effects, scrolling effects, and I'm now going to pick rotate. And I'm going to say that the image will rotate to the right. So as you scroll down, it's basically going to be doing that effect. But here's the really cool thing about when you have a transparent image. If I take this image and I now drop the top margin, let's just go with about, uh, let's go with 150, something like that. OK, now imagine, OK, let's just update it and preview it. Imagine you've got two sections, could even be two columns with a different color or whatever. And now as we scroll up and down, look at the effect we get there. This is just another way of doing something so simple and easy just to make your images bounce a little bit more. And I love doing stuff like this because it kind of shows your creativity rather than your bog standard. Here's a square image with a rounded corners and that's about it. You can now start using shapes. And remember, because you are in Canva, look at all of these shapes you got. I mean, there are so much stuff here. I mean, look, there's, there's something like this. There we go. So I drop that into there. I now crop it. I can like move this around to be in a certain position kind of thing. Like, you know, let's just go with something like that. You could have something like that. Totally different image. You could create your own images and then drop them into your website and have a wonderful scrolling effect going on. There it might be, you know, horizontal, vertical, transparency. Have a bit of fun. Look, I hope you like, subscribe, share and follow. And I hope this helps you out just to do things a little bit differently with Elementor. Take care, everyone. See you soon.